<laughs> oh my god. Clear. What? Blasting already, man? Damn. Oh, what the you hell? There's a speak. lot of them. You gotta speak. Why are you guys laughing? There's so many choices. The number. Oh, you're colorblind. Get the fuck out of here. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're breaking down the new Warbond weapons and trip with my thoughts and opinions about the recent patch. Then I'll be going over some of the fun Halloween stuff we did this year. So, lighting this off real fast, we'll start with the new flinch resistance armor that apparently I and everyone else was using Omega wrong. Okay, you shoot me. Come on. <laughs> Originally, I thought that it just meant that all flinch was going to be reduced, and I think most people thought the same thing too. And that we were finally going to get an armor to counter stim interrupts, which would have been genuinely amazing. And not getting that feels weird. And when we see the post about it being only 95% flinch reduction while you're getting shot, and apparently it reduces screen shake, which is also kind of weird because, like, I haven't had screen shake turned on in any game that I've played in, like, 10 years, so <laughs> this was kind of wild to me. And I really have no idea what the theory was behind this armor, because when you're playing the higher tiers, you're getting shot so much, you're taking so much damage. Honestly, you die in, like, two hits to most things, so when you're wearing medium armor, that 100 armor does basically nothing for you. You die before you can get any real impact from the passive altogether to basically like everything. So it kind of makes the theory of the armor only good before the health changes to make us glass cannons. But I did try my hardest to get the flinch thing to show. And I think the edge of this bile titan speed ticking is the best example that I could possibly provide where the machine gun stays pretty much on point while I'm shooting until I die. But again, that's... A problem is that you just whenever you do get to use the passive you just die anyways and i really think the reason i'm so mad about this being such a useless passive is that the armor looks so cool every set here looks amazing and i want to use them but they just don't really give me a reason to so i personally think it should stop you from getting flinched at like 100 value and include stims also like the superstore was pretty expensive this time around ridiculously expensive this time around and I'm okay with the sleek black armor being kind of expensive because it looks amazing. And the new cape with the red on the inside looks insanely cool too. Like when you're running around in game, it flip flopping it around. It looks good. But I really think the problem for me more than anything is just not having a heavy armor for this passive. When it's the big armor that would have benefited from it the most. I think this was the most disappointing part of this Warbond drop for me because that's what I was excited for. Oh, almost everybody on my stream was excited for the same thing. That unflinching heavy armor was going to go hard and I feel like something cool was just not implemented for no real reason or like maybe they were scared of like the new unflinching heavy meta but like that doesn't make sense anyways so I don't know either way we got a player card in its place I don't I would have preferred a heavy armor in that slot anyways when you do get into the warbond past the drips and onto the guns we do have some interesting technology here if you've been around for a while you know this already but if you're new here I always try to make every single weapon work and try to bring a build that will complement it and do a stress test in kill farm games where we try to kill as many enemies as possible to see what all these guns can really do this makes some of the weapons that people think are really good fall flat very very quickly but also unlocks a ton of secret technology with a bunch of the different weapons in the game and that's why the new holt shotgun ended up being way more interesting than I thought it was going to be originally. My first impression was that the stun was mid until I started bringing a guard dog with me, and then it made me respect how much AWCC this thing can put down, where it showed that even the hardest enemies don't stand a chance against it, and this really made me think this is the best support weapon in the game, the first true support weapon that feels good to use, and it's probably the best weapon to take in with the turret build. I also think that for the way that I play the game, this is probably the second best shotgun in the game behind the cookout when it comes to like full W keying when you bring it with the right build. If you don't bring it with the right build, it is going to feel a little weird. It's also super cool that you can lock in eight of each shell. The reloads are separate from each other. The ammo stored separate from each other. So left for flechette and right for stuns, you can shoot eight of each down by toggling. And this small attention to detail when you are reloading it like from the left and right, really helps bring the game for life to me it's these small things that i really appreciate like a lot like if you on dark tide like that was one of the biggest things for me was all the smallest attention the smallest things and that's why i really like this gun uh it's the little things that go a long way for me you can also set your ammo toggle to a random key so you can just fast swap that way it isn't a problem in the middle of combat it might be if you're on a controller let me know if you can change the ammo toggle on a controller to make it faster but 
in general, I am still basically using this thing in stun mode almost exclusively and only like in emergencies am I switching over to Flechette. And I am taking a guard dog with it like basically all the time because that's what makes this gun really shine. And that's what unlocks its true potential. So if you haven't tried using this thing with a guard dog yet, like the machine gun guard dog on the bots and the laser guard dog on the bugs, you're going to cook basically everything on the screen. And <laughs> you can even stun charges, which is super cool. Now, moving on to the SMG, it's great against armor enemies like the bio artillery and rocket striders. I really like the damage combined with the penetration on this thing. It feels impactful when you shoot it and it looks amazing, but it's another gun where the shoes thing ends a little bit too quickly. And in general, with the limited magazine size, it felt very mid against the bugs and about the same on the bots to me. Not bad. Not good, just straight mediocre, like middle of the pack kind of stuff for me. I know that Rocket Striders are also a huge problem, but there's way better primaries for taking them out. And when I brought it in to the like heavy Devastator spawn seed where I thought it would really thrive, it really didn't do what I needed it to. The heavy recoil combined with that low magazine size made it so I never had enough shots for what was in front of me. And I even tried a few different play styles with it, like a full spray down where I just Imagine an SMG would play the way I was doing it, where I just W keyed everything, but it felt bad because of that long reload. And it also has this weird problem where sometimes you do a full reload and then it only shoots one shot and then you have to reload the entire thing again. It's really awkward and it burns the entire magazine. It happens so regularly that it feels really bad to play, in my opinion. And the other place I tried was a single shot which actually felt like a lot better, but that's also not why I'm bringing SMG. That's my main complaint because I had the same problem with the tenderizer for a while where you had to play it with a, like a marksman rifle. And I see a lot of people saying that they play this SMG like an AR, but I think it's best played as a marksman rifle to get the most out of it right now. And that's the main reason that I don't like it. I don't like weapons like it's an SMG. I shouldn't have to play it like a marksman rifle. I should want to play it like an SMG and it f should feel rewarding to play it like that. A few people also asked how I would change it, and honestly, I really only think it needs like double the reload speed so that you could run and gun with it a little bit better. That way you'd have that more thematic SMG feeling while maintaining the power. And this super cool <laughs> reload, like it's less than a super cool, but like it's just a light push. And I, I would like it to be a little more aggressive, you know, and if they doubled the speed on it, that would be it for me. I think it'd be perfect. Outside of that, though, I did find a build that I felt really, really good with on it. And it's not going to be what you expected. I used the machine gun with it on the bugs so that my primary and that were both going to be shooting AP3. And it felt really good just like fast swapping and not having to think about like where I'm going to aim with a different gun. It kept a consistency that I didn't really have before that felt really good to play with, right? Like I used to do that with the DCS, but doing an SMG was interesting. So anyways, moving on to the purifier pistol, the charge up on it feels really good to shoot. And it's basically a remove one guy in front of you panic button no matter what. So I really liked it for that. The limited ammo economy does feel a little bit weird at first, but for what it does, I kind of understand because once you start slamming fully charged shots with it, you really start cooking. And again, you can just pull it out, kill one guy in front of you. It feels really good. I'm just not sure if it breaks in my top three with the verdict center or bushwhacker yet. So I definitely need to play some more games with it, but combined with stuns, I think that the games I played with it felt awesome. So if you were on the fence about getting new Warbond or grinding it out, I definitely think it's worth it for the drip alone because once you get to the point that you can run whatever armor you feel like, looking cool is like the true end game. And all three of the guns bring something fun or unique to the table, which is a lot more than I could say about some of the other Warbonds. I'll also be updating my Warbond prior list on the next stream and posting that in the text guide Discord like usual. But I also just wanted to talk a little bit about the patch and what I'd like and dislike with the biggest problem basically being stunlocked-ish when you go on a stratagem, uh, you kind of just get stuck in place and that feels really bad. So I wanted to bring more attention on that. I know it's getting talked about a little bit, but it's something that needs to get removed from the game. Uh, the airburst rocket launcher spread has also been randomized quite a bit more. I was literally making a full guide. I was showing a bunch of the clips on stream and uh, the spread is a lot weirder. Like it's very inconsistent from what it used to be. So I can't really one shot hulks or chargers. Uh, well, consistently from the side anymore. Feels kind of bad, so I hope they rein that back in. I also love the new Gatling Barrage sound effects. It sounds way better than it did last patch. Here's just a small comparison of the two of them.
new shield generator relay looks amazing. Like it's huge, but like on tier 10, it disappears in less than a second most of the time. So I really think they need to stop playtesting this kind of thing on T5 and lock it in on tier 10 and get a true balance of it. I know it probably lasts forever on T5 at that rate, but I think that this thing should be balanced from the top down. And like we said in the old balance doc, like way back in March, we said this, they need to add a stratagem hero panel on it so that we can recharge it and keep it up longer. Or maybe the shield gets broken and goes down. You can punch the stratagem hero and it comes back up. That way it's more thematic and cool and fun, really. <laughs> that's basically what I'm all about is like fun, cool and interesting things. And I think that's the most fun thing that they could do with it. Also, if you haven't used the Dominator, it got a brand new sound effect and it just sounds ridiculously cool it sounds cool yeah it sounds it sounds cooler when you're not the shooter yeah that's awesome i also have a huge negative for this patch and that's that the boss accuracy and senses were reverted for like what seems like the force alvin's time i know i'm exaggerating that but last patch they did a thing so that uh they wouldn't blast you through walls anymore and their accuracy was lowered a little bit this was clearly reverted this update and they are pre-firing you before you come around corners a lot of the time detecting you through walls and just doing really obnoxious things that feel bad to play against arrowhead seriously needs to lock in one baseline dev build for the boss and not tweak it anymore and make sure all of their random two build specials are just on the same patch so we stop having these weird inconsistencies every update Another problem, a huge problem with the bots that I know of, if you've watched my streams, you've seen since the first hotfix after Escalation of Freedom, is that if you kill too many automatons, your game just hard crashes. Just doing the capture of the flag mission and shooting it down enough dropships is enough to close the game before it even finishes most of the time. And any time we've had two detector towers and tried to kill farm them, we kill so many enemies so fast, we crash the game by like the 20 minute mark. This again, this has been happening to me on stream for what is that like two months now like since that second week of escalation of freedom and it just com remains completely unfixed and just isn't getting acknowledged accidentally killing too many bots and having my game crash out is just way more annoying than anything else and one other thing is i think on tier 10 this probably won't be a popular opinion either but it is what it is i think that the bugs need to be spawning way more enemies during the bug patrols update we were killing like 4,000. our top out was 4,800 kills and the game was never lagging when we did that and we had no crashes on the bugs but now it's down to like 2,500 as bugs killed before they basically just give up so i hope that they ramp the patrols the spawns up on the bugs a little bit let me know how you guys feel about that that again would just be for super hell dive and again i know that this is just a, a problem for like the hardest difficulty but it's a lot of stuff that just gets written off as cry diving and i think it's important to bring attention to stuff like this so that hopefully it can get fixed sooner than later so if you have some more issues with the update that i didn't cover i've been noting a bunch of them to include in the next balance feedback and if you found anything serious i would really appreciate you dropping it in the comments so i could go test it out and make notes of it uh or just drop a clip of it in my discord so i can see it and then oh, that way we could just make the game we love get even better that's what's really important about all this and I will also be doing my updated balance feedback form this week. I'm thinking Tuesday or Wednesday, so I'll announce that in the community tab and at Discord when I'm going to do it. But for now, I just wanted to share some of the fun Halloween moments and clips that we had. And I wanted to thank everyone for showing up and hanging out because it was a ton of fun. Even though I know most of you rascals was just sitting there laughing at me, getting stressed out the entire time. I hope you guys had a happy Halloween and I hope you just enjoyed like the fun moments we had too. Did you, go that? Did you guys not hear that? Oh shit. Red, red, blue, yellow, red, red, blue, yellow, red, blue. There's so many choices, the number. Oh, you're colorblind. Get the fuck out of here. Go, 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 go. Push it, button. Push it, button. Push it, button. I'm not making it. Okay, make the play, dude. Run to that door closer, right? Close it, close it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, there's my body. Hey, you a bitch! Hey, Clayson, you can have my almond water, bro. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. You need a champ. <laughs> okay. You just wanted a hug, Clay. What the hell? Can you do a quick, quick prayer for me, dude? Before you leave the room? <laughs> what? Blasting already, man? Damn. Oh, what the hell? There's a lot of them.
Why are you guys laughing? That was play. That was a twofer. You never do a twofer alone. We need to count down. It's a countdown, Clay. Three, two. That was a good countdown. Great countdown. Yep. Three, two. Yep. All right. On three, we start charging. Three, two, one. Blast them. Three of us got downed instantly. So this is the big skeleton on the entrance. I wanted to show you guys this the other day. Figured it'd be better to show you on Halloween. Uh, there's a guy in the... So this was a hearse that was beside it. And they had a skeleton in the driver's seat and in the passenger seat. And you could see him in the back. Uh, he almost got me, bro. Big space T. He almost got me. I didn't let him get me. I locked in. All right. Now, next part of this was the entrance. Don't go. You know, we was... Uh, is what it is. It was kind of cool. This was one of the most fun Halloween walks that I've ever been on. I really, really enjoyed it. All the props they had were super cool. I don't know if you remember those like old family channel Halloween movies like Halloween Town. Um, but like this is what I don't, this is like that, but real life. It was so cool. It would it would that's what dude, it felt like I was walking through Halloween Town. And like this head was moving. I was just taking a bit. My phone's old, right? So some of this is blurry. They had the creepy ghosts. They had the little dolls everywhere. They had little, do there was a whole doll section and like all the eyes moved left and right. It was so creepy. It was great. Uh, I went with my, uh, uh, my mom, my dad, my aunt, uh, my cousins. And then my cousin had all his kids there and his wife. And like, <laughs> we were just walking through. We had so much fun, dude. It was crazy. Everybody was like screaming, getting jump scared. And like, look, this was still the very entrance, right? Like you can kind of see it was, my phone was freaking out because all the lights, it didn't know where to focus, but this was a person. And they were like walking up to people, scaring them in the Halloween, in a, in a pumpkin patch part. But like, look how, like you can kind of get the feeling for it, right? So it was really cool. I had a blast, man. Right? Like this was cool. It was like 20 bucks to do the walkthrough. And it was like a solid, like 10, 15 minute walk. Like it was really, really well done. A little blurry. And we got the monkey. The monkey was clapping these symbols. This was cool. <laughs> the monkey wasn't clapping the symbols. And then some kid walked by. He started clapping. I'm scared. The shit. It was so funny. And then um, I didn't think these two. This guy got me, bro. He scared me. He jump scared me. I did because he, he let like five, ten people go by him. It got me and like five other people behind me, by the way. He scared the shit out of us. We got jump scared like crazy. He, he got us good. And then, like, this is where the resort was. is way in the back there. So we were pretty deep in the forest. Frankenstein in the chair. This was cool. I think I have a close... Yeah, Frankenstein in the chair. This was a prop, dude. This is one of the props they had. This is one of the coolest props i ever seen. He's, like, vibrating and shit. Like, it, the sounds were, like... The sound effects were on point, too. Like, I don't know if you guys have done anything like this where you, like, go on these cool little... Like, last year... I don't know if you guys remember, I put it in the video, uh, me and E.T., we went on that, like, zombie walk through that, like, creepy little thing or whatever. It was like a, like, they, they set a whole zombie thing up. It was so cool. And, like, they were, like, scaring us in the haunted house. It was, like, really red. And, like, there was that big bodyguard looking dude at the very start of it. I remember I had a whole, we had a whole little video of it and everything, if you dare. And, like, this reminded me of that, but, like, it was just, like, a walk through a forest. And it was really bright and, like... I don't know. It was fun. There's also like a dude walking around with like a fake chainsaw revving it up. The butcher shot. The spooky hat. This was cool. <laughs> and then uh, this was inside the butcher shop. And then the red, the other one was like way too blurry. And then this was the very end of it when we got outside of the forest. But there was they had these crazy fog machines going. Yeah, we had a blast, man. 